What if something goes wrong with your airplane and it's something you've never even heard of before? MCRA Nation, Jason here. Did you do your previous homework? Because this video, while it'll be cool and it'll make some sense to you, it'll make a lot more sense if you've done your homework. By your homework, I mean going all the way back. Hopefully you've watched the analysis of the Kobe Bryant accident and then more into this theme of this Boeing McDonnell Douglas bit that we've been talking so much about, especially watching Lion Air and learning about the MCAS issue because you're gonna see some similarities here today. By the way, please make sure that you're just catching up with this like, subscribe on YouTube, like us on Facebook, it means the absolute world to us, and leave us a comment to check in. Let me know where on earth are you watching this right now? That's your question. Are you at the gym? Are you at work when you should be working watching this? That's okay. It's totally, I'm at work right now too, so it's okay. Let's dive into it here uh, quickly. This will be a short one for us today. Departing Stockholm, uh, the aircraft, an MD-81, was de-iced, but it was not inspected by the de-ice crew. Shortly after liftoff, pieces of ice slammed into the fans of both engines, deforming the fan blades sufficiently to disturb the airflow to the compressors. That disturbed airflow caused the compressors to stall, and this then caused the engines to actually surge. Now the flight crew responded by throttling down a little. Their engines were surging, so they throttled down a little. But an automatic system, the ATR, Automatic Thrust Restoration System, a system that had not been described to the flight crew of Scandinavian Airlines System, SAS, simultaneously increased the throttle as a response to the asymmetrical engine power and the reduced climb rate. Thanks to another pilot on board who had actually studied the systems, they were able to turn off the automation, lower the nose, and they are able to glide towards the only open field all 129 people on board survived. During the investigation, it was discovered that the pilots of the Scandinavian Airlines were unaware that such a feature even existed on the MD-81, a McDonnell Douglas aircraft. That plane had been in their fleet for just nine months. What does that sound similar to? Thankfully, everybody survived in this case. It sounds similar to that pesky little MCAS issue as well. Something on the plane that they knew nothing about. And what was the saving grace? One pilot who had taken the time to study the systems thoroughly to know that this could be a potential issue. What are things on your aircraft that you may not even know about? What are things that you have discovered? What are things that, man, that G1000 does that you didn't even know it could do? Or things that Avidine does, right? Good, bad, indifferent, it doesn't matter. What I'm sharing this for is to say, you need to learn everything possible about your aircraft. I hope this, these last three videos of this series have woken you up to Pay more attention when you're in the M0A online ground school, going through those systems lessons. I know they're tough. I personally am not super mechanically inclined, so I always struggled with systems. You know what helped me a ton? Getting out there into the maintenance shop, getting my hands dirty, dirty and assisting in the annual inspection, assisting in an oil change. That's what helped me so much to get a better understanding of my aircraft. If I'm gonna fly it, I wanna know how everything on it works. If I'm gonna transition to a new aircraft, I've got a date with the POH for many, many months, line by line, learning everything. I remember back when we first bought the Technum, I didn't know anything about Rotax engines. I didn't, it's been a long time since I've flown a twin. This was a, a new glass panel for me, a Garmin 950, not quite a G1000. I got a PDF of that POH, and I still to this day on my iPad, and I can just thumb through all 600 pages of it. And I just literally read every little thing in there to be a master of my craft, not just my aircraft, but this craft, this hobby, this career that we all have chosen. What are some areas you're gonna focus on from this? And I, and I, don't, I don't share this series to, to scare you. That's not the purpose ever of any accident analysis. I share all this with you to make you think, not just outside of the box. Jeez, don't think outside the box. Don't even look at the box. There is no box. Look beyond that and think bigger than that. 
What can you be doing this week, this month, this year to make you that safer, smarter, real world pilot? Is it getting the written test done? Is it getting in the MZRA online ground school? Is it making the transition to that next aircraft? Whatever it is for you, take action on that. Why don't you put it in the comments? What action are you committed to taking this year to make you a safer, smarter pilot? Put it in the comments right now, and I and the entire m team and the m nation, this great family we have here, we're your accountability partners. Let me know in the comments down below. Have a blessed, outstanding, abundant rest of your day. And most importantly, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, everybody. I'll see you.